Hey, Pets. How are you? I'm a big fan of your name on your uh, your page there, Unknown. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that wasn't the plan, <laughs> okay? I'd, not on me. Not on me. It's all on the forward planning, but it's been 30 years overdue, so uh, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I blame you. It's a, it's all on you because this is it is on me. Back. Yeah, it is. Well done. I know. And congratulations on the journey to it here. had to it had to come eventually. Yeah. Well, you know, I think um, what I'm happiest about is that I'll be coming to South Africa with the 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 right group of people that I'll be sharing the stage with. Yeah. And that may may not have happened earlier in my career, so this is perfect. Okay. Well, all good, but. <clears throat> Does it feel like 30 years to you? Uh, sometimes. Uh, sometimes it feels longer, and sometimes <laughs> it feels like just a, just a couple of years. But uh, it's been a pretty fun ride, and we've had some pretty uh, tremendous success and also some uh, pretty brutal failures. And uh, when you come out of those, uh, the success feels even better, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know from san francisco to the world right that's kind of where that's the genesis yep. and that's then you the genesis yeah yeah you take this message which is very it's very rich and very personal for you and then you get to take this to the world it must be really interesting especially at this point in your career to take that message and try and have it translate across the UK, across Europe, and then obviously to South Africa when you arrive here. How do you, you know, I mean, do, do, do you consider that when you are putting this uh, tour like this together? Yeah, I think so. Like, uh, you know, there was a time when we all left San Francisco to, uh, you know, the world was open. We could be wherever we wanted, but, uh, but San Francisco was always home. And so when we realized that, we also realized that everyone in the world knows of San Francisco on some level, uh, not maybe a, a, a the same level as they know New York City. Mm. Uh, however, I think maybe San Francisco is more romantic and uh, and more Bohemian. coastal. <laughs> What's that? Bohemian. Yeah, much more bohemian. And, uh, and there's a lot more uh artistic you know uh mm. i wouldn't say freedom but uh but there's such an artistic value to the bay area that uh we all felt would be the right message to to bring to the world you know from wine to culture and uh and etc you know music and so we decided that that was the right message for us to bring uh, that city has done uh an incredible thing for us by giving us a home and a chance to be a part of their lives. It started there with uh, San Franciscans accepting us, and mm. uh, and and now we just extend it. Yeah, you're just a different Seattle, but yeah, wine and song. Which unfortunately we don't have enough time to dive into your penchant for uh, beautiful wine, which you um, have have labeled and owned and won multiple awards for so congratulations for that but, thanks uh, i'm looking forward to south african wine i've had some dude, and uh and you're like in trouble much. yeah you're in trouble oh is that right just, our wine is good just just saying that yeah. yeah your wine is great no disrespect but you're gonna yeah. I, I think if that's all you take away from certainly your cape town leg it's going to be extraordinary wine but um <clears throat> Moving along, because I've got about seven minutes left, and I know your time is precious. But um, talking about precious, uh, what do you what do you think? You know, because obviously, you know, a lot of time has passed. There's water under the bridge. What in your mind makes you know a band like Train timeless? Well, I think you know, as I was uh, explaining to someone earlier, what I think I've uh, grown to love most about train as a as a artistic traveling mechanism is that the people that are in those audiences are every age and 
having an equally good time that uh, yeah. uh, a, a child can come with their grandparent and everyone's going to enjoy it. Uh, I just have always been proud of that. Uh, I think that music is something that an entire family should and can be capable of enjoying. And uh, I'm proud of uh, providing that for, for train fans and even people that aren't train fans that may show up uh to check it out and then hopefully they leave a train fan yeah yeah and you've you've done this thing where you know obviously the you know the initial certainly the first two albums made a real dent in the world and then you and then you know obviously the world changed and i mean you're still entirely relevant 30 years later um well, I think we're relevant on some level, but uh, you know we're not uh, we're not Beyonce, but or, or Taylor Swift, but uh, now, nobody can. But be we Taylor have Swift. we have a place. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Look, I look. I, I think you know. I was chatting to a British band last week, um, Orchestra Maneuvers in the Dark, and it was interesting because they were pipped to the post to the number one position by Taylor Swift, and yes, there's certain you know certain battles you're never going to win but what i do get a sense if you look at any top five in the world um dare i call you a legacy act um because you kind of weirdly are now in that space which if i was you pat that's that's quite a weird space to be in because i don't think you consider yourself a legacy act but yet yeah you are 30 years later you are a legacy act that's always been the word I've been trying to avoid. So uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm doing everything I can to not be a legacy act, but uh, but I totally understand how uh, yeah that, that's being seen like that. It makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, the point of legacy implies that you're worthy to be in the place that you are, which, as train, you are because you've done the heavy lifting. You continue to do the heavy lifting you've released new music in the last year and yet you continue to um kind of pioneer a space yes not taylor swift space but a very important space i think for so many fans of the kind of music that you make and i think yeah there's a level of res responsibility there because you you created this gateway and now you've got to feed it that's right. Uh, that's a very uh, wise way to put it. And believe it or not, not everyone loves Taylor Swift music. So we provide something that uh, they can't get from her, perhaps. And yeah, uh, and the list goes on. But because you know, like I listen to a, a lot of hip hop, so <clears throat> it's uh, I listen to things that I I can't do. Um, yeah, you know, listening yeah. to Nina Simone or. Uh, you know, w as much as I love performing Led Zeppelin songs, we we've never been Led Zeppelin. So listening to a Led you Zeppelin did it well. album is still joyful. You, well, thanks. You did it really well. You so, did it you know, best. it's uh, we're providing something for someone out there and uh, and I'm proud of that. Yeah, yeah. But now bringing it back to South Africa 2024 to a country you've never been to before that you've aspired to and wanted to perform in and uh and now that that becomes reality and i think it's going to be interesting because obviously we we are getting your tour on the back of your european and uk tour um mm -hmm. do you kind of compartmentalize what you're going to bring to each country and then i suppose in this in the in the case of south africa do you, do you have any sentiment attached to your relationship with the country that You've probably received one or two gold or platinum awards from over the years. Well, every you know, every country we've ever been to is very similar to the others and very different. Um, it's like meeting a human being, where you know we all have something in common, whatever that might be, but we're all very different in who we are, and so my preparation is more I have to be prepared uh, so that I give you the best performance that I can. But what I'll leave with is more important than what my perception of South Africa is. Uh, mm. My never experiencing, uh, you know, uh, a meal 
with South Africans in South Africa uh, seeing your landscape, perhaps going on safari, which would be really exciting for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Like all of those cultural things are going to be what I leave with that will only make me want to come back more and more. So that's, that's you know, it is a long time coming that I, I wish that this was our seventh time coming <laughs> or whatever, but, uh, but it's not. And so hopefully there's uh, many more of these trips ahead. Good. Well, I just, I love the name of the tour. It's probably the, the most protracted name for a tour ever in the history of the world, but I think it's <laughs> <laughs> in the history of the world, which, which oh, is, yeah. no, which, which I love because it's so honest. And I think, you know, that's, that's what's so endearing about everything that you've always done. And it's one of the things that, you know, having done this for as long as your career, um, it's uh, it's 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 wonderful to see the level of passion and commitment through all of the heady times that we've all been through. But the fact that you are still yeah. there, um, we yeah we commend you and we kind of thank you and we look forward to celebrating you being here very very soon. Well, not that soon, but well, I but appreciate that. Christmas. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah that's um, right. But thank you, Pat. It's been a pleasure and a privilege. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's been a privilege for me too. Thanks. And I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting you in person when I'm there. Well, if Darren does his job, then that may happen. But yeah, thank you so much. And Great. be safe and well in between. Great. I will. And you as well. Merry Christmas. Yeah. yeah thank you. Cheers, everyone. Thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you, Joyce. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.